All right, let's begin with the big story of the day. The retrospective tax has been junked and amendment has been moved to remove the tax and ensure that all uh, transactions which took place before 2012 are not subjected to the retrospective tax. It's been seen as many as an attempt to right the wrongs of the past. Ruchi Bhatia is joining us with more details. This is a major development coming in. The government has bid goodbye to the ghost of retrospective taxation. Remember, the late finance minister Arun Jaitley on the floor of the house had said that India does not stand for retrospective taxation. However, the tax department was often criticized for pursuing some of the uh, legacy retrospective taxation issues with companies such as Vodafone and Kane at several international courts as well. But in a one big bold step that the Modi government has undertaken today that is going to provide tax certainty, that is going to provide a big message to investors that India means business, India is uh, uh, going to roll out the red carpet for investors and we do not stand for retrospective taxation. The government has brought about an amendment to the Income Tax Act that will nullify the retrospective taxation. In fact, the amendment says that no tax demand shall be raised in future for any indirect transfer of Indian assets undertaken before the 28th of May 2012. In fact, it also gives a window to the government to settle some of these cases such as Vodafone and Kane as well. In fact, uh, uh, now uh, we do understand uh, that uh, the government will be able to refund as much as 8,000 crore rupees that have been collected so far uh, without any interest. Remember, without any interest if pending litigations are withdrawn from various litigations. This is a big step coming in. In fact, earlier in the day, we spoke to the Revenue Secretary Tarun Bajaj as well, and he did say that uh, this is going to put an end to some of the legacy issues, and uh, it will tell investors that India is a destination that will provide you with tax certainty. All right, Ruchi Bhatia also spoke with the Revenue Secretary Tarun Bajaj earlier in the day and after the story broke, what we wanted to understand from Mr. Bajaj is what would be the mechanism of um, uh, removing the retrospective tax and the effects it has had. So the bill also mentions a proposal where they say they will refund amounts that have been paid under the retrospective tax but without interest. That however will be some conditions. Uh, not only would they need to withdraw the cases, there would be uh, an undertaking and certain other conditions that would be laid down in the rules uh, that they would have to comply with before uh, the actual settlement of the amount does take place. So, but uh, basically it would involve all the litigations to be closed and some kind of an undertaking that discloses all matters and only the principal amount will go. Okay, so you're telling us only the principal amount will be paid and all the lit uh, litigations will have to be done away with before a resolution can be arrived. I want to understand from you, sir, the thought that went behind this uh, legislation. I remember speaking with you time and again and asking you, uh, what kind of a solution are we really looking at? Uh, uh, help us understand uh, what was the really what was the big thought behind it what was the message that you got from the finance minister uh, the prime minister before you decided to find a legislative solution to it the uh, political executive the prime minister the finance minister and the government was clear in its views since the time of 2014 that it was not in favor of any retrospective taxation and uh, the only reason that uh, we in the government carried uh, through with these cases and arbitration uh, matters uh, in outside jurisdictions was that they were legacy issues. And as was put in 2014 by Mr. Arun ji, uh, that the disputes relating to these cases, which are at various stages, were to be allowed to reach their logical conclusion. So that was the thought process. And once... Uh, there was clarity on that count. I think within a few months and I think almost the first session after the decision, the government has taken this very bold step. 
So the day this, retrospect, this retrospective tax uh, was brought into being is uh, etched in my memory very clearly. It was uh, a budget day, a big day for all business journalists and any business television channels. And there was no mention of it in Pranab Mukherjee, who was then finance minister. There was no mention of it in his speech. It was a little later when the budget document was made available to journalists and people started going through the fine print that they realized that this retrospective amendment had crept in and then chaos broke loose. It showed its reaction in the markets. Um, lawyers uh, were quickly figuring out what this means. So were tax experts. And then, of course, we know what happened next with Vodafone uh, at that time and Cairn being slapped with huge tax penalties. They took it to arbitration. And recently, the current government of India has lost those cases. In fact, this also became a huge political issue before the 2014 general elections, the first term of the Modi government, where it was pointed out as this being one of the reasons why foreign investment was not coming into the country the way it should. And the Indian landscape was seen as an unfriendly one. Seven years later, it's taken a full seven years, but those wrongs have been righted to some extent. Does it have anything to do with the fact that the Indian government has to pay Cairn $1.2 billion because we've lost that arbitration in international courts? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, let's look ahead and talk about what this means. Dinesh Kanabar, CEO of Dhruva Advisors, on the show with us this evening. Mohit Saraf, founder Saraf and Partners, talking to us. Ketan Dalal, a Catalyst Advisors, on the show, as is Vipul Javeri, Managing Partner Tax, Deloitte. Gentlemen, welcome to all of you and thank you so much for speaking with us on what is a big day. Um, Mr. Kanabar, let me begin with your comments. Is it too little, too late or will this truly change things for companies looking to invest in India? I don't know about the comment too little. If at all there could be a debate as to whether this is too late. But the way I would look at it and the, the way you summarize it is that one has to always look forward in life. So here was an amendment which did not yield any revenues other than what was forcibly recovered uh, by sale of shares held by Kane in Kane India. Uh, gave India probably a bad name in the international community. And more important, put a question mark. Does, does India honor the rule of law? Because remember, that it went all the way to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court interpreted the law. And then the retrospective amendment was, so to say, brought in as a clarification to say this is what we believe the law always meant. And nobody bought that argument that the law always meant it. So there were two situations here. First is in the context of Hutch, where income was deemed to have arisen by sale of shares of an overseas company with an underlying value in India. And more important, Vodafone, which interpreted the law at the time and said that it had no obligation to withhold taxes, was called upon to pay those taxes retrospectively. Clearly, uh, in case of Kane Energy, uh, share demand was raised, shares were sold, and monies were recovered. And both Vodafone and Kane went into arbitration. Uh, Vodafone won, it did not have to pay any taxes at that point of time. In fact, there were certain amounts which were paid before the Supreme Court judgment came and after Supreme Court judgment came, those were refunded. In the case of Kane, uh, damages were awarded, penalties were awarded against the government of India. And both the Kane and the Vodafone matter was carried by government into appeal. And then we saw the entire drama that unfolded when Kane approached various governments overseas to try and recover the arbitral amount by attachment of Indian assets, which was a drama which was never warranted at all. And I think the government has done absolutely the right thing by really exorcising this ghost. What the current amendment essentially says is two things, that if the litigation is put to rest, which of course is the necessity, then the government, if any demand has been raised, it will be deemed that a demand has never been raised at all. And if monies have been paid, they will be refunded by the government, albeit without interest. And I think that's a very significant step forward rather than debate as to whether this could have been done seven years ago or not done seven years ago. Uh, as, as, as I would say, it's a significant step forward. There were three things which have happened in the recent past, or the two things which have happened and now the third one. 
First is that our rates of tax have reduced very, very significantly and brought down to as little as 15% for new industrial undertakings. We then have had two schemes, one under direct taxes, one under indirect taxes for resolution of disputes. And now we have exorcising of the wood of home post. All these three sort of sends out a very, very strong message that the government is committed to ease of doing business, that the government does mm. not want to litigate and therefore foreign investment is welcome in India. Yeah. You know, um, Ketan Dala, let me come to you. Um, do you think it is fair to ask that why has it taken so long? So where is this coming from? When we spoke with Arun Bajaj earlier, uh, what, what he had to say is that the government's thinking is, or the government's thinking was, that since these cases were in our arbitration in international courts, and there's a precedent that gets set when the government of India, no matter who is in power, is uh, in a legal matter, they wanted to you know, take it to its logical conclusion before rolling this back. So that is what has happened now. Do you think this will make a huge difference? Which companies or how many companies will this make a difference to? Or does it get limited to Vodafone and Cairn, which are the two big cases? So Tamanda, first of all, on your point of uh, why is it taken so long? And, you know, as Dinesh was mentioning, you know, I am not sure it, there is much sense in going into that. Having said that, the government came to power in 2000. This government came to power in 2014. And even the manifesto had mentioned about tax terrorism and retrospective amendment both. And, you know, the point regarding international arbitration and taking it to its logical end perhaps may not hold that much water in the sense that it need not have got to that stage in the first place. It could have been done. It was a prior government which had done it. So that is my you know, uh, answer to your first point. On to your second point, the, the statement of objects and reasons has mentioned about 17 companies. So it is not just Vodafone and Kane, but at least another 15. But to the best of my knowledge, there are many other companies which may be smaller. Uh, so it, the number of companies is quite large. The third point which arises is, you know, look at the amount of time and energy that has been spent it's an enormous amount of time and energy by the assessees as well as by the government. Then the signals that one has sent for so many years, you know, the signals have not at all been good. But I mean, it has been done, it has been done, uh, which is at least better than the situation that, uh, that uh, it still keeps hanging. Another point which I want to make, Tamanna, you know, I don't, I mean, the, the trigger is stated to be you know, we need foreign investment in a COVID time, etc., which is which is all very good. One of the other triggers is, could have been, not is, but could have been, that the Air India divestment is to take place. And with the, as Dinesh said, the, the drama that has gone on abroad, you know, how would that divestment, you know, we are already in August today. And LIC, from a financial standpoint, and Air India, partly from a financial standpoint and partly from the perspective of the amount of energy and time that the government has spent, that could be one of the reasons also. So anyway, it has happened at, uh, at this point of time. It is better than not happening at all. There's just one more point, Tamanna, I want to point out. You know, on the point of refunding without interest, if I remember correctly, Kain has already won an arbitration award of $1.2 billion plus the another 500 million dollars which is interest and cost by doing that are you therefore nullifying an arbitration award and i don't know what the implications of that is going to be that will be important to watch as well <clears throat> hmm. uh, will ken want to give up um, the wins it has had and get some of that refund, but without interest is the other question. Mohit, Saraf, we've talked about what the possible triggers could be. How do you see this in the context of what's been happening with Vodafone Idea? Kumar Mangalam Birla uh, writes a letter on the 7th of June, then he steps down uh, from positions on the board and the future of the company is in jeopardy. I mean, I'm not sure how much the reversal of the retrospective tax will actually help the company survive, but is it also an attempt to send the right signal um, 
to maybe foreign investors who are watching that it's not like we're an unfriendly tax regime or an unfriendly investment destination, even if Vodafone Idea is currently in peril? I tell you, one aspect is the Vodafone, which is basically the telecom operator. I think that is a very different issue. And that is a different, I think that is an industry issue. And there are also the revenue collection issues, which has come out of the Supreme Court. That is a separate issue. I think we cannot mix this issue. I think if you look at it, like in my view, this is the, if you look at the timing, the timing is that Kane is going after Indian asset at cross places. They have a $500 million damages. Right now at that stage, if you come up with a law and say we are ready to do settlement, return the money, provided you withdraw your litigation. In my view, if you look at it, this has come at a time when almost government's hand is tied behind the back. And therefore, I don't know to what extent will it send a good signal. And the important thing here is that you've lost everything. And I think in my view, and this is a very important part of a judicial reform because government is the biggest litigant. And when you litigate, you have to get analysis done whether you will ever win. The chances of winning on a retrospective tax where there are clear principles that this is unfair and un unequitable under the tax treaty. There was no chance that they would have won. They could have only got the time. And now they now the Kane Energy has a damages against them. So in my view, I don't know to what extent, yes, maybe Kane will settle, but it does not send that good a signal. If this kind of come at least two years before that they, the Kane Energy was going to French government and try to enforce assets, I think it would have sent much better signal. But again, as what Dinesh said, they I Durustai, maybe at least it sends some positive signal that at least the government is because really at the end of the day you've lost out everywhere now what signal are you getting you're basically saying when you're totally compromised then you will take it back and then also you will not pay the interest so it's not a very great signal but i would say that it is better than not doing anything and losing everywhere and causing such a bad image damage to india and i would really say that the government need to think through very carefully when they are doing international, because really international arbitration under tax treaty is a very important thing. And you have to have a back of the envelope calculation that do you have a good case? If you have a fundamentally a wrong case, Supreme Court in 2012 has said that does not, that you can't do retrospective tax, then you come up with an amendment and then you get through a clarification and then you lose everywhere. And at after what almost what eight years you come up with an amendment, it's not, it's I think the time is bad and I think the delay will only tarnish image. But I, I but the government is one thing is very clear that they are not going to do retrospective tax changes anytime in future and that's a positive thing. Read this amendment along with that and the good part is that they have come up with a legislative solution. If they had come up with an executive solution, it would have again got into a lot of controversy. So that's a positive thing that at least people will see finality. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vipul Javeri, um, you know, let's take a look at what kind of signal this sends in terms of the government of India ready to correct wrongs of the past. Why the retrospective tax also had incensed so many people was because it seems like you were arbitrarily changing the rules of the game because the outcome of court cases didn't suit you. Do you think that, you know, um, ability to admit that something was wrong and change it will go a long way? Yes, certainly. Uh... You know, what started off possibly as a misadventure uh, uh, in 2012 uh, uh, has been, you know, set right uh, because they have obviously seen that that misadventure has misfired. Uh, the, the amount of uh, possible economic damage that it has done is uh, perhaps unquantifiable. Uh, so I think the learning really out of this is uh, a, of course, that the government is uh, has the will to admit that you know they have erred. Uh, 
uh, which is the first positive. The second is, I think uh, if, if the government demonstrates this consistently going forward, that a fiscal legislation is more of a tool to stimulate growth, uh, economic growth, and not a tool to, you know, uh, uh, extract tax uh, and, and just to meet certain tax goals. I think the larger goal any government has is uh, stimulating economic growth. And, and that really uh, is something which, you know, must stay. Uh, it is, it is not going to be beneficial to any government uh, to, to do a wrong and then undo it. Uh, and therefore, you know, as in some countries, before legislating anything uh, uh, or from a fiscal law standpoint, there is an impact assessment that is made. An impact assessment, not just from, you know, what does it mean uh, from a revenue collection, but also what does it do to the economy? What does it do to various stakeholders? Because the government's job is to govern and not just to be a tax collector. So I, I think these are the right signals, the commitment not to, you know, do retrospective amendments uh, is a good commitment. The action of, uh, uh, you know, reversing a uh, retrospective amendment is again a positive thing, but I think this needs to go on in a very consistent way. Everything that has happened in the recent past, including the uh, reduction in tax rates, uh, you know, simplification, or at least giving the choice of simplifying uh, the application of law by choosing whether you want to go under incentive schemes or you want to play, uh, pay a lower rate of tax, all these go in the right direction of giving a taxpayer a certainty of tax law, uh, giving a taxpayer the comfort that there won't be retrospective uh, changes to the law, and giving also uh, the comfort to the taxpayer that in case there is a error of judgment at any point in time, there is a will to also admit that and uh, you know correct a wrong. So. I think uh, this is something that augurs well for India at this point in time, particularly. Okay, let's let's talk a bit about the devil in the details. Mohit Saraf, let me come back to you on this. Uh, the conditions now, the conditions mentioned so far that we know of are that you have to take back all litigation and arbitration uh, if you want to put an end to the retrospective matter as a company and get a refund but you won't get any interest there may be other conditions as well is what has been hinted at we don't know what they are is this a gray area that could uh, stump the whole process what are your concerns here what do you expect these conditions to be i think the concerns about the condition is largely the same. I would say the, the government has to do a negotiation with the, with the people, particularly with Kane, who has a damage and who has a clear arbitration award. And I'm sure the government must have done that. And, and, and because Kane has a big interest in India and most likely it may not be a fair, but they may agree to that, uh, that, that suggestion and withdraw it because this has taken a lot of productive time and litigation and the image and obviously Vedanta and Kane they all are raising capital in India uh, therefore projects in India and raising capital in a country where there are so much of unregulatory uncertainty is always difficult so it is to some extent Vodafone is not married that way to India but Kane is and therefore it, it serves the larger purpose and I agree that probably most likely Come, companies will come out because really others don't have an arbitration award. Kane has, and there will be probably a settlement. And I don't know about other conditions. But again, what is say is, is it fair for somebody whose assets you have acquired, assets you have sold, dividend you have acquired, and after understanding that it was a blunder, and you carried on that blunder for eight years, and then you come back and nullify it? and say that this is a very positive step. I am surprised at that. I think it is, a, it, is a, it is an appropriate step if they have done it eight years back. It is right now they're doing it under compulsion. There could have been one way of losing the battle 
and pay and and that would have an executive action because if they, they are basically the foreign companies the foreign government would go after the indian assets if there are sovereign immunity issues then it's a different issue but there is a very positive positive positivity that they can go allow certain indian assets to be acquired and in that situation if you are changing the law and and you basically trying to give an position to people to come back and do a settlement and take your interest take your money back i would say it is a minimum step not a maximum because really if this was done before kane had an award i would have called it much more progressive this is much late because really you have a clear liability on you now you are basically again undercutting your liability so if you have to look it from that perspective that this is really not honoring your liability because at the end of the day india being a uh, indian government being one of the largest litigant you have an award against it the award can be set aside on public policy that has not happened now you're trying to come up with a solution a political a, a, a maybe a legislative solution to cut down your liability and therefore you have to look it from a, that perspective and i'm sure certain investors would definitely look at it from that perspective which is again it is a positive thing but i don't think it's a path breaking step it i would say yes if it was it was done 2 years back i would have said it was a path breaking step i think at this stage it is more saving the face that's the way i would look at it you know uh, dinesh kanab our last question and let me broaden the picture since we're talking about the retrospective tax being axed Uh, a good step a great step in the wider context of giving investors and companies who set up shop in india a sense of stability that once the rules are made clear to you they won't randomly change because uh, some government and some minister feels like it should do you think that there is a lot more to be done broadly to have that system in place is india despite all the promises and endeavors become the kind of investment destination where there is stability and certainty on tax so i'll just take a minute taman on the earlier question which you had expressed a concern on what sort of conditions could come about the conditions are very very well known the bill is already there and the conditions are fairly simple it just says that all litigation has to be withdrawn and just to explain to you in the context of vodafone for example it is the government which is in litigation uh, uh, vodafone having won an arbitration award so government has to withdraw the vodafone doesn't have to withdraw anything similarly in the context of kane the government has to withdraw the appeal and kane has to agree to simply receive the principal amount and not the Uh, uh interest or any other damages that have been awarded and just one point i think one needs to notice that the government is not accepting the arbitration award because it is the stand of the government that tax is a sovereign right and not a right which is subject to arbitration so the what the government is saying is arbitration award is aside we would not like to go into it because we have challenged it in appeal but we would rather let the sleeping dogs lie and sort of under a legislative action put it behind to your specific question tamanna as to whether the sense what sort of a signal and where does it take it look at it india is at a cusp of a revolution where foreign investors are getting increasingly wary of investments in china we have seen the impact of that on our own stock exchanges and how indian stocks are being moved at this point of time etc there is also this whole issue that there is too much dependence globally on china for logistics supply etc and india is emerging as an alternate base as i mentioned earlier we have had a very low a 15% rate of tax on new manufacturing companies is probably as competitive as it gets a normal rate of 25% again is as competitive as it can get if we ensure that the litigation in this country is reduced which to some extent not large extent to some extent has been happening because of the vsv schemes and the other schemes and we are able to ensure that going forward we do not create more litigation then probably we are in a right space and we are really sending out a very strong message to foreign investors that mm -hmm. india is open for investment right and we have to follow this in spirit not just in letter big big move today it's taken 9 years 
for the retrospective tax to be finally buried as a bad call made at a certain time which carried on for seven years after new government also came into place but finally it's been laid to rest can the ghosts of the past be exercised now is what we'll have to wait and see thank you so much gentlemen for joining us on this big day on this big discussion we'll take a very short